What's up, everyone? We're live. Welcome back to another live stream here on YouTube. Hope you're doing fine. Hope you're doing amazing, of course. And today we want to discuss Akinashi. Now I'm sitting down once again with Michael Tama. Michael is a Akinashi trader. You know how to use them really, really well. He taught me a few things about Akinashi in the past. And we want to kind of focus on that today and talk about how to read them, how to interpret them, and how to use them to know what other people are doing in the market. So Michael will discuss that in detail. If you have any questions during this event, can always comment below in the chat. Uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions as we go forward. And th let's just start. Michael, you don't have any notes or any preparations so much, but we'll, we'll try to share some examples and things that we think are relevant for you and useful. But Michael, what are your first thoughts about Hakanashi? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, hey, Great to be back. Um, I, you know, I, I don't usually have a lot of charts on my screen, but Hakanashi, my HAs, I, I always have, you know, in the corner of my eye, what's going on. And, and we'll... We'll get into you know why I do that and what really Heiken Ashi tells you that sometimes normal candlestick charts don't. Awesome. So where do you want to begin? What's the first step? So uh, I know you have some examples to share, but let's kind of think about what are some things that I can actually kind of tell tell you about the market that let's say regular candlesticks cannot tell you about the market. Yeah, I mean if you just think about you know your regular candlestick chart, you know if you're when the new chart uh, the closing price makes a uh, you know, lower than the original, the prior one, it turns red and then it goes green, red. Sometimes that can be a little confusing and quite honestly, doesn't tell me much. What Heiken Ashi does is it smooths out that trend from a color perspective. And, you know, we'll take a look at it in a second, but it gives me an idea much better of what the traders are doing, who's trapped, who's not. It kind of gives a glimpse of sort of trader psychology and how I can take advantage particularly of traders who are trapped or trader panic, per se. Awesome. So I guess there are maybe different settings that I can ask you, or is it just one thing that you just apply on your chart and you're good to go? Yeah, I mean, I use basically the default settings. Um, you know, Actually, there isn't really a lot of settings in your Heiken Ashi, uh, you know, uh, uh, strategy in your platform, but I use the default, I believe it's 21. Um, you know, 21 setting. Basically, it's going to go back 21 bars and kind of smooth those out. And that gives me a nice sort of ebb and flow, particularly in trend markets of, you know, where I want to see things are starting to change and I want to take advantage of it. Awesome. So let's kind of begin. And you want to share some examples of how I can actually would work on chart and what they would tell yeah. you compared to Canal 6 and where do you want to begin? Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's go. Let's go to I picked a few charts just from the, you know, the past day or two, uh, you know, fresh off, fresh off the screen. And we can go look at a Forex example, if you like. Great, great. So this, uh, this is just taken the other day from a uh, Euro US dollar and uh, Euro US dollar pair. And if we look at to the left, you know, right before that, that down arrow, what I'd like to see, and this is how traders can really, you know, start using this as, you know, on Monday is what I want to see is a particular trend or a particular color trend. So here we have sort of, you know, a red, slow, slow moving red trend. Some blue HAs come in. OK, and now we have a new series of blue HAs. All right. Hi, Kanashi. So five or six. And then here comes the big red, big red one right where my arrow is. What Hi, Kanashi is telling me is what happened? Always ask yourself this question. Where were the buyers? How come they didn't push it up? Okay, you know, you had some some red, some selling pressure, and here can't here comes the you know the buyers, they couldn't hold it. Now a candlestick chart can maybe tell you something, obviously a, you know of a price dropping, but price for all intents and purposes is an advertising mechanism. It doesn't really tell me much, but the hike actually tells me, hey, you know what? There was plenty of opportunities for the these buyers to push it, and they failed. That's where I want to get in. Those buyers are trapped. I want to get in on it. And that's why you see my short entry right there, you know, just taking advantage of that, that HA change. And then for the most part, just riding that wave. Cool. Now, this sounds kind of simple in the sense that you just enter when it, when it counts six turn color. But when you get to being in seller's market, you're going to get hit like really hard. So how would you kind of filter or adapt it to sideways markets with Akinashi? Or is it only reserved to when the market is really trending clearly? You know, you want to you want to really take advantage of trending markets. I mean, that's it, it, it does filter out 
uh, a lot of the noise, particularly in trending markets, it shows more panic. It shows where the other half is failing. Um, so you want to either do it in a trending market or where you anticipate. And like in that previous example, where we anticipated a trending market, um, you know, where there was sort of a lot of chop. You know, uh, you saw the Bollinger Band sort of squeeze. I like that. That means it's kind of like that pressure cooker ready to explode. All right. Now it's a question of which example is that going to be in? So, um, you know, which, which am I going to be long or short? And the, the Heikinashi sort of kind of, I didn't have to use a lot of brain power. I just looked, say, who's trapped? The Heikinashi told me who was trapped. And now, you know, it looks like there's a, a, a change in ownership. And I want to be on the early stages of that. And the HAs kind of told me that, you know, pretty much at an early stage. If you notice, I'll use things like filters or confluence factors. In this case, I used a Bollinger Band where... I can look, say, okay, my first target's going to be that lower band, and then I'm going to ride it, uh, you know, my trailer down to the promised land. So tell me about the size of, of Iconash candlesticks. Is this something you look at where if the size is bigger than the previous candlesticks, it's more important, or does the size not really matter there? Um, you know, I, I like to see size. I mean, sometimes if it's too big, I'm kind of late to the party, so I have to either look for maybe a small pullback or something. Um you know, if we're not using Forex pairs, say in the equity futures, I like to see if volume was really powerful during that move. In other words, was this the start of some type of panic? That's what I want to see. I want to see buyers who are trapped or sellers who are trapped. Um, if it's just sort of normal ebb and flow, you know, I can take a chance, uh, you know, and you know, take advantage of that. There's other got to be other confluence factors. I use volume. Um, you know, we can get into more of like you know, you know, moving average changes and, and even market profile. But really what I'm looking for is, um, are people trapped? You could have a, a blue HA turn to a red and it's just chop in the middle of a bear, a bull flag or something. That doesn't tell me much. But I do want to see is that sort of thrust, particularly, again, not red light, green light, or in this case, red light, blue light, where there were buyers, some sellers came in, buyers re-entered and then failed. Think about if you're on the other side of that trade. Think if you're long. You know, you're saying to yourself, "Hey, what's going on? Like, how come? You know, how come I'm, I'm my green is turning red, or, you know, I, I'm not really getting to where I want to go? What's happening? Red, you know, red HAs are coming in again. It's that initial sign of those buyers starting to panic. I want to be a part of that. I like that. So, an example you had kind of like a yeah, like you said, right? It was red before, so the bears in control. And then you turn to having the bulls in control a little bit, but then you go back to bulls failing and the bears turning to come in again in the market, which is a really good, really good, really good strategy for sure. Exactly. So the, the key here is don't think this is like a red light, green light. It's not. There is no such thing. It's Think about what Heiken Ashi is telling you about the human psychology or the trader psychology. Even look at, if you can go right back to that chart, the last, you know, there was another uh, opportunity there where you had the sellers, right? They were exhausted. Right, right uh, around the 2 a.m. mark, where buyers started to come in, all right? Sellers kind of said, oh, hold on a second. And then the buyer stepped right back in. In other words, where were the sellers? How come they didn't push this back? Like, weren't they going to continue this trend? Heiken Ashley says, apparently not. I went in on it. And then, again, a nice little wave. And a lot of that wave is not just buyers buying. Those are the sellers covering. So, uh, you know, and those are those are nice because you can just ride it, you know, ride that up. And as you can see, you know, with Bollinger Bands, you had that squeeze. Then it starts riding the upper band. I like that. I can just sit back and let Heiken Ashi tell me when to get out. Cool. We'll dive into more of the kind of the filters you can have and the indicators you can use. And we have some questions about this in the chat. So we can discuss that more later. One thing we had, a question we had a couple of videos back when we did the video about Heiken Ashi before was, I can actually might not tell you the exact price in the market right now because it's using a different calculation. So do you kind of look at how price is compared to the Hekanashi and how that kind of relates or would you just enter when it when it, when it kind of close no matter what the price is? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I said, I mentioned earlier, prices, uh, you know, I, I think I'm the lonely guy on the street when it comes to this thinking, but price is really just advertising mechanism. It's, I'm not that concerned about it. I'm looking more towards sentiment who's trapped and is there an opportunity for me to take advantage of those traders like it was just on the example where they all had to cover uh, i want to be on the other side of that and i want to ride that train when they cover so 
price, sure, I want to get the best price I possibly can. Maybe I usually put my orders on pullbacks. I don't try to, you know, buy at breaks of bars or things like that. I, you know, I want to sell at the store. Um, but uh, my most important thing is I want to see the beginning and early stages of panic. Awesome. You want to go to the next example, then we can get some, some questions. If you got any questions, yeah. make sure you comment below in the chat. If you're watching the live video, you can comment in the chat there. If you watch the replay, you can just comment below in the comment section. We'll be able to cover your questions in, and we can reply to them or something later. That's totally fun. So let's go to the example here that, we, that Michael shared with me before. And that, was, that one is on future, right? Yeah. Yeah, I figured we'd do a, give a little futures example for our futures uh, fans out there. Awesome. Yeah. So, again, the same type of scenario, all right? You have a, a, a seller's in control, a little tease of the buyers, and then here come the sellers. Now, this is the case where it was a down trend day. We had a big, big down day, uh, actually, actually a down week all week in the, the uh you know, S&P futures in the U.S. markets. So I was thinking short to begin with. Um, I throw in, in this particular example, one of my favorite forms of confluence or, or filters is the VWAP. So what I wanted to do is look for sellers, have some buyers attempt to try and take control, but fail right at the VWAP. It's one of my favorite, favorite strategies. Right? Because not only I have that HA panic on my side, but there's a lot of institutional buyers and prop prop shops who, you know, their filters is they can't start buying until it goes on the other side of VWAP. So when you have that type of failure, I, I know I not just I don't just have, you know, regular day traders on my side, but I got institutions and bigger money who can't be going long at that point. So I'm hopping in. And the best part about this from a risk management size side is where do you think my stop is? I close over the VWAP. You know, not a problem. Um, look at two bars before where my arrow is, two or three, where the sellers had control. They pushed it over VWAP, but failed to close. That's my initial tip saying, okay, let me get some buyers in here to try and push it and then fail. And you can see it was just off to the promised land. Could have just rode your stop the whole way down. It was a nice, uh, that was a good day on the 18th. Awesome. Pretty close cool to me. And, and that's definitely a good technique that unfortunately you can't really apply in Forex. That's going to be really hard to do. But in stocks or futures, you, you definitely could do that. Yeah, so, different markets, different different yeah. indicators, different ways to support. Sure. Awesome. So let's kind of cover this now. We had a question in the chat before about indicators. So what are some of the indicators that you could use to sort of like complement with Akanashi? Yeah, well, we showed two that I use uh, quite often. Uh, you know, in the FX markets, I'll use the Bollinger Bands. Um, I like to see this panic or this failure. Uh, say for a short on the upper side of the band, uh, similar to our you know Bollinger Band reversal type strategies um, that we use in our academy, and I'm looking for the other band to be my final target. Maybe take some off at the midline. Uh, on the future side, I I have a, a series of them. I have a VWAP. Um, I'll have my uh, um, you know volume where so when the when the you know bulls try to push that, I want to see that on low volume okay i don't want to see these big spikes so it looks like that you know there's enough thrust in there where i may be wrong um things like that uh, also i want to use it as, so as far as indicators whatever indicator you use to show that there was a you know there's a trend day going on or at least it appears to be early in the day that you know one side seems to be in control i'm not looking for that up and down chop type uh type mentality awesome sounds good would moving averages work with Akanashi? You think that's a good strategy, something to look for in terms of buying one price kind of hits the moving average or something? Yeah, it's a, it's a great one. In fact, it was the, that was the next uh, indicator on my list. Particularly, I, I like them uh, in all markets on the moving averages. Um, when you have that sort of, in the case where you have the shorts, where the buyer started to attempt to take control, yeah, have them take control right in the middle of your, if you have two moving averages, you know, right in the middle of there or testing like a major one, like a 50. Um, <clears throat> have something where some level of confluence where you can put your stop behind, quote unquote, a brick wall, where you're not just hoping that buyers don't take control. You want something else to where say, okay, I have a, you know, say a 50 moving average. I personally use a nine and a 30. So um, if they're going to push it up to that 30, 
30 moving average. That's sort of my wall. That's another added level of confluence. It gives me about four to four and a half percent additional edge on my statistical back testing. That's enough. That's good enough for me. Pays for lunch, right? Awesome. Cool. Um, if good you guys have a question, make sure you can comment below in the chat, like always. I've seen this few times already. So if you have any questions about Akanashi or something else, you can comment in the chat. We'll be there to answer for a few more minutes. But Michael, anything else we didn't cover yet that I think it's important to mention about Akanashi? Anything that people should kind of know or or think about when they start to use them? Yeah, I mean, one of the concerns, and I talked about Heiken Ashi, and we spoke about this, uh, you know, in Montreal a few years back. Um, one of the th things I don't want everyone to walk away with as this is sort of some holy grail, red light, green light type thing. You really need to use it. One, you need to understand the context of the market, where we're at. Um, you know, is it a trend market or is it we identifying potentially in a, you know, starting a new trend? Also, we don't want to be too late to the party. Sometimes I'll see, you know, traders get involved on these HA changes really, really like too late where the move's already been made. And they say, oh, well, Mike, you know, you said, okay, red, and then the blue tried to fight and then they get back in. Well, yeah, sellers are taking control, but they're taking control really late at the party. Okay. And sometimes a lot of those sellers may start to take some profits at that point. And for them to take profits, they have to close their position and buy. What that is, now, you know, that's uh, buyers may start taking control. So try to get in a little early. Also good for risk management. You know, you, you have a solid place to put your stop. Too late to the party, you know, where do you put it? Somewhere in the middle of that thrust range? You know, it's just, you're just uh, like a sitting duck waiting to get stopped out. We have some question here about timing, like time frame for trading Hanganashi. Is it better for kind of lower time frame, higher time frame, and mix of both? Uh, three minutes, five minutes, fifteen minutes, or or whichever. What do you think yeah. about this, Michael? Yeah, good question. I'm glad glad uh, you know they brought this up. Um, if you if you put your time frames too small, say like on a uh, scalping five minutes, you will have a lot of noise. And sometimes the hike in Ashley is a little late to the party. Think about it; it's digesting the last say twenty one bars before it starts to show its you know show its cards. So. On a day trading or a scalping thing, like a one minute, three minute, five minute, it, it sometimes can give you too much, uh, too much noise. Now, if you're really experienced at it and you really follow the ebb and flow of Heiken Ashi, you can kind of read into, well, this may just be just noise or whatever. But I like to use my personal sweet spot, uh, and I may be talking my own book, but this is like a 15 minute, 30 minute, 15 minute, 60 minute, around that range. Gives nice, smooth calls, very little noise. Um, that's also, you know, my personal sweet spot as far as like my trading lifestyle, what it's optimal for that. Um, but I know, I know traders who use it on a, on a, uh, one hour, four hour and a daily for their, you know, retirement, uh, trade their retirement accounts. So, uh, it works really well. And, uh, you know, the fund uses it, uh, for managed accounts as well on that time frame. So just try to be a little careful, uh, with the shorter time frames until you're experienced. But I like that 1560. Good question. Yeah, it's definitely like a versatile tool you can use in different scenarios, different things. And I don't think there's like one recipe, one time frame, one thing to really kind of use it on. You can have different things. Mm -hmm. And the point here is just kind of give some tools, things that you can use and things that you can implement. I think I can actually are great tools. I personally don't use them. Michael uses them a lot, and that's good. Uh, but we don't make this too hard to complicate it for you guys. If you have any questions, you can also comment in the chat or the comment section below after the video. We'll be happy to help with your questions. And I think that's it for now. Michael, thank you for being here and, and sharing your advice with people and giving them tips on how to use different tools and risk management as always and just kind of leveling up the game for everyone on the channel. That's cool. And thank you guys for being here. We'll catch you here pretty soon in, in the next video.